Hello everybody, welcome back to another episode of Math with Mr. Emond. Today we're going to be finishing up our unit on rational functions. We're going to be looking specifically today at connecting the graphs of our rational equations with the equations themselves. And we're going to relate the roots of those rational equations to the x-intercepts of the graphs that we find both algebraically and graphically. Let's get started. So here we have uh, our first example problem. And we're just going to be trying to uh, relate the roots in the x-intercepts here. That's it. So graphically and algebraically. Let's start with uh, trying to find the roots of this rational equation graphically. Now, there's two different strategies you can use here. So we're going to go in our calculators. We're first off going to erase everything and uh, add a graph. So here we are. There's two different strategies. You can put everything on one side and set it equal to zero and graph. So we can do that. Well, in this case, it's already on one side. So we can just type it in x over 6 over x plus 2. Notice as I'm typing it in, I'm adding parentheses so that my calculator knows exactly where to put things. It's just an extra layer of precaution so that my calculator does exactly what I want it to. And in this case, we graph, and I can see that there's two x-intercepts. Let's analyze this. So we're looking for the zeros, or the roots. We're going to highlight over them, and I have one root, uh, which is negative 1 and 0, and my other root, which I will analyze and find a 0 and highlight over that section, and it's 4 and 0. So there we go. Graphically, uh, you can solve. The other way, and this is kind of a silly way for me to show you, but we graph the left-hand side. If there was something other than a zero there, you would add a second function and type in what it was. So if instead it was like x minus 1, you type that there, and then you would look at where the two lines intersect. In this case, we have the line y equals 0, and so the points that the, the two graphs are intersecting are actually the x-intercepts of the first graph to begin with. So it was a little unnecessary, but you can do it that way as well. All right, let's learn how to find the x-intercepts algebraically. So the reason why you might want to solve algebraically and graphically is because when you solve for these equations algebraically, you it's just it's more precise and and we're gonna have uh questions later on that show you that graphically it can actually trick you into the wrong answer sometimes so we're gonna try to do this algebraically we're just gonna kind of learn the skills here first off when you're solving algebraically we know that the denominator of a rational function can't be equal to zero right because if this is zero it becomes undefined so when would that denominator be equal to zero? You set that denominator and you say, I'm not going to let it equal zero. So I'm, I'm looking for a restriction here. And we're going to subtract two to the other side. So x, we can't allow to x, x to equal negative two. We're just going to keep this restriction in mind for later. Now, the way we're actually going to solve this is we're going to look for the lowest common denominator. So this has a denominator of 1, this has a denominator of 1, this also has a denominator of 1. The lowest common denominator between all of them is actually just x plus 2. Now the reason why we're finding the lowest common denominator is because we're actually going to multiply both sides by that lowest common denominator. And so we're going to multiply this side as well. And now we're going to go ahead and finish doing this. So what we know is that when you have two parentheses multiplying each other, you have to use the distributive property. So this x plus 2 is going to multiply all three terms here. And of course, that's going to multiply there. So what's x plus 2 times x? Well, x plus 2 times x is x squared plus 2x. 
What's x plus 2 times 6? That happens to be 6x. Actually, let's not do that. Let's think for a second. If I have x plus 2 in my numerator, because here I'm basically, I, I would never do this other than uh, uh, trying to show you. When I multiply 6 times x plus 2, I'm going to get 6 times x plus 2, right? When this happens, I have the same thing in my numerator as my denominator. So they're actually going to cancel out, right? I know that's what's about to happen. So instead of trying to waste my time distributing this fully, how about we just go ahead and write 6 there? Because we know that when I add this to my numerator and it's already in the denominator, they are going to cancel out. Let's do the last one. Negative 5 times x plus 2 is minus 5x plus, or not, well, plus negative 10, but let's just put negative 10. All right, so we distributed it all, and now you can see the purpose of multiplying by the lowest common denominator. We're able to actually cross some things out and simplify. What's 0 times x plus 2? It's 0. All right. We're going to combine like terms and simplify. So we only have one degree two term. We have 2x minus 5x, which is minus 3x. And we have 6 minus 10, which is negative 4. I'm looking at this, and you're looking at this, and we both know that's factorable. It's x minus 4 and x plus 1. So there we go. We have two terms. Now we can set both of them equal to 0 and solve. x is going to be equal to 4, and x is going to be equal to negative 1. We have our two answers here. We're going to compare it against our restriction. They do not match. Both of these, therefore, could be solutions. You do want to check your answer. I probably shouldn't have boxed that. Yeah, I'm going to, I'm going to erase the box for now because we do want to double check. All we're going to do is we're going to plug them into our original equation. So I'm actually, just for uh, simplicity's sake, because I don't want to be scrolling up and down, I'm going to drag this function over there. I'm going to go back in my calculator, and I'm going to start plugging x equals 4 in. So I have 4 plus 6 over 4 plus 2, and that is minus 5. And if it hits 0, which it does, I know that is a solution. So now I can box that. That's a circle. That is not a box. Now, let's change this to a, a rectangle. Okay, now I can box my answer. All right, let's try negative 1. So we're going to go back in our calculator and try negative 1 as x. So plus 6 over negative 1 plus 2. And that is all, subtract 5 from it, and it's also equal to 0. So both of these work, and of course box my answer again. There we go. Both those solutions work, and if we verified it graphically afterwards, we would have saw that's what we got graphically too. So there we go. We solved algebraically. We solved graphically. We see that the roots of the equations are the same graphically and algebraically. Comparing graphs and algebraic functions. Absolutely amazing. Let's uh, try this out. So now it's going to be your turn. Go ahead and try this out. When you have the solution, come back and unpause the video and we'll go through the answer. See you soon. Welcome back. Here we go. We tried this out. Let's check our solution. So you should have found, first off, your restriction, x cannot equal 0. And your lowest common denominator is 6x. Now you're going to want to multiply both sides by 6x, which is what I did. I multiplied by 6x on both sides. And then I started distributing. I noticed here that my x values are going to cancel out, and 6 times 3 is 18. Likewise here, 6 times 6x times 1, uh, that's this red line here, that's 6x. Now I have my second term, and I get x squared minus 13x. 
I simplified and then I factored and I had my solution as x equals 9 and x equals negative 2. We're going to verify these graphically. Let's go ahead and this time you'll be able to see uh, comparing two sides together. So on the left hand side we have 3 over x which we'll go ahead and just graph that. There it is. Now we're going to add a second function, an f2, and we're going to put the right-hand side there. So 1 plus, and then we'll have x minus 13 over 6. And we'll graph that. Now we can see that the lines actually intersect, right? I'm going to move my graph so I can see the two points of intersection. I'm going to analyze my graph and look for those points of intersection, hover over them, and I can see the first one happens at the point negative 2 and negative 1 fifth. Now I only really care about the x value, and I am noticing that that is confirming this one here. Let's see what the other one is. We're going to analyze our graph, look for the point of intersection. That point of intersection happens there. It's getting a little uh, crowded here, but now after moving things around, I can see that happens when x is 9 and y is 1 third. And of course, there we go. So we verified graphically, we solved algebraically. If you got those answers, great job. All right. Let's try another example. In this case, we're going to compare the accuracy of graphical and algebraic solutions. So let's solve the equation, this one, graphically using either one or two functions. In the last problem, we used two functions and we compared them to find points of intersections. This time, I'm going to show you what to do in order to just use one function, because now hopefully you know what you would do for two functions. All you do is you move this stuff to the other side. So we're going to subtract x and we're going to add 1 to cancel these terms out and move them over. So what I'm going to graph is x squared minus 3x minus 7 over 3 minus 2x and then minus x plus 1. This is what I'm going to graph. So let's go ahead and do that. I'm going to wipe my calculator clean and add a graph. And I'm going to start plugging things in. So my numerator is x squared minus 3x minus 7. And my denominator is 3 minus 2x. After that, we have minus x and plus 1. And we're going to graph it all on one side. There we go. This time, when you do this, your solutions are your zeros. So we're going to analyze the graph and we're going to find our zero. So there's the first one. And we got a negative 0 0.431. So graphically, x equals negative 0 0.431. Let's check our other zero. So analyze graph zero, it's this one here, and it's 3.1. X equals 3.1. All right, let's go ahead and verify these solutions algebraically. So we'll start by rewriting. Well, let's actually, let's start with finding the restrictions. What is X not allowed to equal? So we have 3 minus 2x is not allowed to equal 0, which means 3 cannot equal 2x, which means x is not allowed to equal 3 over 2. Great. Let's continue solving. So we have x squared minus 3x minus 7 over 3 minus 2x equals x minus 1. Now what's my lowest common denominator there? I only have one denominator, so that is my lowest common denominator. Let's go ahead and multiply both sides by that. So we're going to multiply by 3 minus 2x 
on both sides. And let's distribute. Well, on the right left hand side, this becomes very easy. Those cancel out. So on my left hand side, I now just have x squared minus 3x minus 7. On the right hand side, I'm going to have to use the distributive property. So I'm going to FOIL and I'm going to have four terms. The first term is 3x. The second term is negative 2x squared minus 3 plus 2x. Now I'm going to move everything to one side. The way that I choose which side to move things to, because I can go in either direction, is I do an analysis of my greatest degree. So x squared is my greatest degree. Now I'm going to move things to the side that makes it positive. So if I moved this one over here, I would end up with negative 3. If I move this one over there, I would end up with 3. Which one do you think I prefer? I prefer it when they're positive. So I'm going to move everything from the right-hand side over to the other side. And of course, i do the same to this side. So plus 2x squared. I'm going to combine these. Minus 3x minus 5x is I'm going to be subtracting 5x. And add 3. All right. Everything on this side is now gone. Here I have 3x squared minus 8x. And then negative 7 plus 3 is negative 4 equals 0. Now I'm going to take a guess and say that trying to factor this in my head is going to break my brain. So I'm instead just going to go straight to using the quadratic formula. So x equals negative b which is negative 8, plus or minus the square root of b squared, so negative 8 squared, minus 4ac. A is 3, c is negative 4. And that is, of course, all over 2a, so 2 times 3. All right, x equals 8, the negatives cancel out. Then we have 64, negative 8 squared is 64. I'm going to go ahead and use my calculator. I have 64 minus, actually plus, because the negatives are going to cancel out. And uh, I have 4 times 3 times 4. That leaves me with 112. Plus or minus the square root of 112. And this is over 6. Okay, let's check what the square root of 112 is. So we're going to analyze our radical. It's 56 and 2. 28 and 2. We have a pair of 2's there. And 7 and 4. Seven and four and two and two again. So we have two pairs of twos. Whenever you have a pair, you can withdraw it, right? So this is going to be uh, two times two, which is four root seven. And if you uh, need a, more help on radical functions, uh, you can watch my video on radical functions. Here we go. This is x equals eight plus or minus four root seven over 6. Now all three terms are divisible by uh, 2, so I'm going to go ahead and reduce them. 4 plus or minus 2 root 7 over 3. Okay, now I basically have my two answers. I have x equals 4 plus 2 root 7 over 3, and x equals 4 minus 2 root 7 over 3. And I can double check these. Uh, 4 plus 2 root 7 over 3. <laughs> Let's convert that to a decimal. 
is 3.097. Uh, let's say is 3.10. And we have 4 minus 2 root 7. Over 3. Again, convert that to a decimal. Is negative 0.43. Let's compare these. Negative 0.43 and 3.1. Yeah. So we got the same answers. These answers, though, are more precise. Why? They're exact answers. They're not rounded off to like decimal places. They're, they're perfect, exact answers. So it's preferable. Okay, it's going to be your turn. Go ahead and try this one out and come back when you think you have the solution. See you then. Hey, welcome back. Hopefully you uh, had a good time solving that one. Might have more questions than answers at this point. Let's go ahead and first try solving graphically. So when we're solving graphically, uh, we're going to, I'm going to do left side, side, left hand side and right hand side. Actually, well, let's just move it all to one side. It really doesn't matter. You can choose whichever strategy you want. So we're going to have 3 over 2x minus, we have 2x over x plus 1. And then we have plus 2 because we're going to move that over to the other side. There we go. And now when we move everything to one side, what are we looking for? We're looking for the, the roots, the zeros. I don't see any. Let's zoom out. Okay, at this point, it looks like a straight line. And I'm zoomed really far out. So zoom back in. And I, I know that there's they're not actually crossing, okay? So I'm going to say... Uh, graphically with that is a uh, no answer. Um, just to verify, let's graph it the other way. So we're going to go back to our function. I'm going to erase this plus 2 there. I can, I'm going to double check. So this is 3 over 2x, which, which that's what this is, minus uh, 2x over x plus 1. So it's written correctly. I'm going to go to F2 and I'm going to type in negative 2. So now I'm going to have two lines. And I'm going to zoom in, and there's no point of intersection. So when I graph it like that, uh, nothing really changed here. It's still no answer. That was graphically. Let's verify algebraically. So first off, this is going to result in x cannot equal 0, and this is going to result in x cannot equal negative 1. What's my lowest denominator? Lowest common denominator, it's the 2 multiplied together. So 2x times x plus 1. And I'm going to leave that in its factored form for now. Then I'm going to multiply both sides by that. And I'm going to distribute. So what I notice is on the left term here, the 2x's are going to cancel out. And so really, all I need to do is x plus 1 times 3, which is this first term. On the second term, the x plus 1's are canceling out. So really, I just have to do 2x times 2x. On the right-hand side, I fully distribute. Now I'm going to continue uh, distributing and canceling out terms. And I'm left with x equals negative 3 over 7. Interesting. I actually got a solution this time. Graphically, I didn't get a solution. So what's going on here? Let, let's test that negative 3 over 7. Because we shouldn't have a solution, at least not graphically. Let's double check negative 3 7. So that's, a, that's in between 0 and negative 1. Let's try zooming in. We're going to zoom in where there should be a point of intersection. Make sure we're not being lied to. There's nothing there. All right. 
let's verify our point. So we have 3 over, and this is going to be negative 3 over 7 multiplied by 2. That's this, uh, this first part here. Okay. Now I'm going to subtract 2 times negative 3 over 7. Okay, and then divide that by negative 3 over 7 plus 1. What is it equal to? Negative 2. So my left-hand side becomes, becomes negative 2. And negative 2 equals negative 2. Yes, it does. We do have a solution. This is a proper solution. It works. Yet when we did it graphically, we were lied to. So you should always solve algebraically. Because the accuracy of solving algebraically, you will never get the wrong answer unless you make a math mistake. But graphically, you can be deceived. You have been forewarned. All right. Example three, solve a rational equation with an extraneous root. So this time we know what extraneous root means. It means one of our solutions might not work, right? So let's try this. What is the extreme, what is the, uh, non-permissible value of this term. So we have 2x plus 5 cannot equal 0. 2x cannot equal negative 5. And x is not allowed to equal negative 5 halves. What about this one? 4x plus 10 cannot equal 0. 4x is not allowed to equal negative 10. And x is not allowed to equal negative 10 fourths or x is not allowed to equal negative 5 halves, which is exactly the same thing. Okay. Let's solve. The first thing I'm going to do is write out my equation. So 2x plus 5 plus 2x equals 8x plus 15 over, and I'm going to factor this to times 2x plus 5. Why did I do that? Well, because I saw a similar factor there. So what's my lowest common denominator? My lowest common denominator is 2 times 2x plus 5. Let's uh, multiply both sides by that. I am going to move that so it looks more like it's in the numerator. But before I do, I chose a bad place to put that LCD there. All right. Ooh. There we go. And this whole side has to be multiplied by 2 times 2x plus 5. All right. Let's get back to it. So on this first term, what do I notice is going to happen? I notice my... 2x plus 5s are going to cancel out, right? This and this will cancel out. But I'm going to undo that because I don't want to confuse myself later. So when that happens, I'm just left with 2 times x, which is 2x. Here, nothing's going to cancel out. I don't have a denominator. So I'm going to have 2x times 2, which is 4x times 2x plus 5. I'll finish that later. Over here, everything cancels out, and I have 8x plus 15. Let's go ahead and finish that step off. So 4x times 2x is 8x squared plus 20x equals 8x plus 15. Let's move everything so that, again, our leading power is positive. We only have one leading power of degree 2, and it's already positive. So we're going to move everything else to the left. So minus 8x, minus 15. Minus 8x, minus... I don't... There is no single term there. Okay. We're going to have... Blue. We're going to have 8x squared 
So now we have 20x plus 2x is 22, minus 8 is 14. So plus 14x Okay, that confused me for a second. There's no x there. And then minus 15 equals 0. This, it, it can be factored. This is 2x and 4x is going to give me my 8x squared. I want a 5 and a 3. Let's check this. This is 8x squared plus 6x. Uh, one of these has to be negative. Um, whoop. Let's try that. 8x squared minus 6x plus 20x is the positive 14 minus 15. There we go. That gives us 2x equals negative 5 and x equals negative 5 halves. Uh, isn't that my restriction? It is. So that's not going to work. And then 4x equals 3 and x equals 3 fourths, which is not a restriction. So that is likely going to be a solution. And we can, we can double check it. 3 fourths. All right, three-fourths over two uh, times three-fourths plus five plus two times three-fourths. So my left hand side is equal to that horrible fraction and my right hand side is going to be 8 times 3 fourths plus 15 over 4 times 3 fourths plus 10 is the same horrible fraction. All right, we have verified it. That works. It's your turn now. Go ahead and try this problem with an extraneous root. Come back to check your solution. See you soon. Welcome back. Let's go through this. So you should have found two non-permissible values that are identical and your lowest common denominator. You multiply both sides by that lowest common denominator, distribute everything out, and simplify, and you get this. You might have spent some time trying to factor that, and then realized uh, that's not going to work, so you put it into your quadratic formula. And when you did that, you simplified it to be 5 plus or minus root 9, which is also 3, over 8. Now 5 plus 3 is 8, 8 over 8 is 1, so the first solution is x equals 1. However, that's one of our restrictions, x cannot equal 1. 5 minus 3 is 2, 2 over 8 is 1 fourth, and that solution, when you check your answer, would have worked. All right, that's it for this video, and that's it for this unit. Hopefully you enjoyed. Have a great evening. Bye-bye. All right, that's it for this lesson and this unit. Hopefully you enjoyed it. See you next time. Keep learning, everybody. Bye-bye. Hey, everybody. You can like, follow, and subscribe to my social medias right here to get notifications as soon as new content is uploaded. This video concludes our learning unit. You can find the playlist this video was in right here and click here for the next unit that we'll be covering. Thanks for watching and keep learning everybody. Bye-bye.